Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on the heart. In this video, what we're going to do is discuss the sinoatrial node. So, uh, the sinoatrial nodes, the sinoatrial node is often abbreviated to SAM for short, so the sinoatrial node. And uh, even more common than hearing it referred to as the SAN, you will hear it referred to as the SA node. Okay, but if people write it, they'll generally write S A N. These all mean exactly the same thing. Anyway, in this video, what we're going to do is study how the sinoatrial node works to produce uh, the heartbeat. Basically, it is the pacemaker of the heart. It sets uh, the beat of the heart, and it makes the uh, rest of the heart contract when it undergoes an action potential. Okay, so the structure for this video is we're going to firstly look at where the sinoatrial node is within the heart, and we're also going to look at its function in determining the heartbeat, and then what we're going to do is actually look at how it works, so how it works to generate this pace, effectively, um, or this pulse, if you like. Okay, right, so we'll start with a picture of the heart then, so um, let's start with the right atrium here. We'll draw the physiology picture of the heart, which is nice and easy to understand how it works from. So here is the right atrium, and then the right ventricle coming down here, okay, and then having the large pulmonary trunk coming out there with um, the pulmonic semilunar valves here, okay, and then again here we have uh, the left atrium over here, okay, and then the left ventricle here, and then the large aorta coming out here. Okay, and then into uh, the right atrium here, we have the superior vena cava, so I'll label it up as SVC for superior vena cava, and then we'll also have the inferior vena cava, which I'll draw like this, going into the right atrium there. Okay, and the inferior vena cava is often abbreviated to IVC for inferior vena cava. Okay, then this here is the right atrium, which we'll denote as RA for right atrium. The right ventricle here, right ventricle, uh, the pulmonary trunk here. I don't know if there is a uh, is an abbreviation for pulmonary trunk, so I'll have to write it all out. Pulmonary trunk. Okay. Uh, then this major blood vessel here is the aorta, the biggest artery in the body. Okay, aorta. This is the left ventricle here, the LV, and this is the left atrium. Okay. Uh, this here, these valves between the left atrium and the right atrium, that is the bicuspid valve. Bicuspid valve, because there are two of them. Okay, it's also got another name. It's also known as the mitral valve, which you will hear quite a lot. I think the mitral valve is its old name, uh, but a lot of diseases uh, involving this valve uh, are still named after the mitral valve name. Okay, and then even a more modern name is to call it the left atrioventricular valve. So left atrioventricular valve. Okay, similarly, uh, the valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle, that can be called the right uh, atrioventricular valve. Okay, uh, so we could denote that the right um, atrioventricular valve, and then we could just put AV valve for atrioventricular valve, okay, or the other name for the right atrioventricular valve is uh, the tricuspid valve, the tricuspid valve, okay, and that's because it has three uh, actual, um, actual flaps making it up, okay, and here are the semilunar valve, so this one is the aortic semilunar valve, this one is the pulmonary semilunar valve, so this is the aortic semilunar valve here, okay, and 
again, these valves, I'll tell you about these valves. They are, um, they're one-way systems, basically. They're one-way flow gates. So blood can push the gate open if it's flowing in the right direction. So these, these valves here, these semilunar valves, they can be pushed this way against the walls of the aorta. So if blood is trying to move from the left uh, ventricle into the aorta, it can push open uh, the aortic semilunar valves. However, if blood tries to flow the other way from the aorta to the left ventricle, it'll push the um, semilunar valves in this direction towards the ventricle, and they just will not push right against the walls of the ventricle. They'll instead get stuck when they're in this um, orthogonal position to the wall, and that will close this gap here. So effectively, they're like a one-way gate, a gate that you can open in one direction, but you can't push it in the other direction. It just gets, it lodges at this sort of position here, and that ends up closing the gate if you try and push it this way, which is what the blood will do if it tries to go the opposite way. That goes for all of these valves. The the pulmonic semilunar valve, again, it's a one-way gate in this direction, going from the right ventricle into the pulmonary trunk. And the atrioventricular valves are a one-way gate from the atria into the ventricles. Okay, the final thing to put on this uh, picture is uh, the pulmonary veins here, of which you have four, two from each lung, and they are uh, coming into um, coming into the uh, left atrium here. So these are the pulmonary veins, PV. Okay, right. Now, where is the sinoatrial node on this picture? Well, basically, it's in the tissue that makes up uh, the right atrium, basically. And it's up near the top of the right atrium, nearby where the superior vena cava joins onto uh, the right atrium. So, where shall we, we'll highlight this in. So, here in turquoise, this is the sinoatrial node, the SAN for short. Okay, that's when you'd use the SAN. When you're drawing a picture and you want to label it on the picture, you'd use SAN. Right. Now, what is the function of the sinoatrial node? Well, basically, it's what we would call a conducting cardiomyocyte. So, basically, the cardiomyocytes of the heart, okay, the heart is made up of a huge number of cardiomyocytes, and they can be divided into two main groups, okay? The contractile cardiomyocytes, which is what 99% of the cardiomyocytes within the, within the heart are, these are the ones which are capable of actually contracting, okay? So most of the walls of the uh, ventricles and the atria will be made up of loads and loads of these cardiomyocytes that are contractile, all joined together to make uh, strands of cardiomyocytes joined together, okay? And then also in the walls of the heart, you have conducting cardiomyocytes. Okay, so these are the conducting fibres. Now, these are not generally capable of actually contracting. They are cardiomyocytes. They have the same structure as the contractile ones, but they're not capable of contracting. But what they are capable of doing is uh, conducting action potentials, but their normal contractile cardiomyocytes are capable of conducting action potentials. Um, but the special thing about the conducting fibres is that they're actually capable of generating action potentials themselves. So, the sinoatrial node is an example of a conducting fiber cardiomyocyte. So basically, what's going to happen is the sinoatrial node will undergo a spontaneous action potential roughly 70 times a minute, equally spaced. So roughly it fires off 70 times a minute, 70 beats per minute is the rough um, heartbeat of, the, of our heart at rest anyway. Okay, so what I mean by that is if we were to plot time on this line, so if this was a time axis, so 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, and these were seconds here, then we would roughly have the heart beating once every second. So let's say it beats at time 0, then it will beat again just before one second, it'll beat again. So it will keep beating rhythmically uh, with a certain time interval between beats. And it's the sinoatrial node undergoing an action potential at each one of these uh, red 
uh, points here, at each one of these points where you actually uh, cause the heart to beat, that actually causes the heart to beat. So how does it then work? Well, what happens is the action potential that the sinoatrial node uh, produces is spread. And I want to stress that the sinoatrial node, it's not just one cardiomyocyte, it's a whole bunch of them, basically. There are loads and loads of cardiomyocytes all connected together. Now, what happens is when these generate this action potential, it spreads into the other cardiomyocytes. So they are electrically connected by gap junctions to their neighbouring cardiomyocytes, which are contractile cardiomyocytes. And then the contractile cardiomyocytes conduct the action potential, they conduct it onto their neighbours, it just keeps propagating basically along the entire right atrium. And although this picture makes it look as though the right atrium and the left atrium are separated, this is, this is an oversimplification. Basically, these, the right and the left atrium are actually next to each other. Um, if you imagine sort of, it's as though I've sort of pulled it out a bit so I can show it all on one page. If you imagine sort of bringing this bit here and squashing it up towards the back a bit to make a sort of more shape like that, that's what the heart is more like. Okay, so the right atrium and the left atrium are actually next to one another. So, uh, what happens is the contractile tissue of the right atrium is electrically connected to the contractile tissue of the uh, left atrium. So, cardiomyocytes in the right atrium connect onto cardiomyocytes in the left atrium. And then, basically, the action potential just spreads from the right atrium to the left atrium. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.